My name is John Strack and I'm with Prominent Fluid Controls and we're doing a video so that we can give you an idea of what Prominent does and how we fit into the market. And one of those ways is we deal with water, whether it be municipal drinking water or even municipal wastewater. We also get into a lot of the industrial plant projects, whether it be for clarification or breweries for their process of water and CIP processes. And one of the things that we're gonna look at is taking a trip to a wastewater treatment plant to give you an idea of how that process works. So one of the places we're gonna go is Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, and we're gonna walk through the Brush Creek wastewater treatment plant and get an idea of how Prominent helps the customer in the process that they need to do. So John, wastewater basically makes it to the wastewater treatment plant, ideally by gravity. In some systems, they actually pump the water into the treatment plant. At our facility, it all rolls by gravity. And as I mentioned, wastewater is you know, comprised mostly of uh, water, 2% solids. And the first physical process we're gonna look at is our mechanical bar screen. The bar screen will pick up anything that gets flushed down the toilet from people's houses, industrial uh, facilities, restaurants. All enters the main pump station. The solids are floating in the water and as they float against the screen, the screen rig will pick them up, pull them out of the flow line and dump them into the hopper. In terms of wastewater sewers, the bigger the sewer, the bigger the article that can actually get put in the sewer and flushed down to, to the treatment plant. The largest items that we've ever received here was a, a leaf blower and we actually had a four by four, um, six foot long piece of um, lumber that was actually removed from our bar screen. Well, John, this is the uh, primary clarification process. So after the water is uh, pumped from the pump station, we move the big solids, we moved out the smaller material, the grit, uh, the most abrasive materials. We slow the velocity of the water down in these tanks behind us and we allow gravity to work for us. So anything that's heavier than water will sink to the bottom of the tank, anything lighter. And you notice there's some brown tannish material on top of the water, that's fat soil and greases. That'll float to the top and remove that solids and, and pump it out to our digesters. The, the fat soil and greases will skim off the top and send it also to digestion. And what's left is matter that's suspended. And the, the technical term is colloidal material. And we use that that stuff is actually material that's food for our next process, which is a biological process, which we're gonna talk about next. So primary clarification, another physical process. So we're at the end of the primary clarifiers, and at this point in time, we've actually removed 50% of the pollution load that's actually entered the treatment plant. From here, that suspended material, the colloidal matter, will become the food for our biological process. The term is called activated sludge, we just have billions and billions of bacteria cells that we grow and their food source is the, the water from the primary clarifiers. We give them oxygen and those are the only two constituents they need to, to reduce the materials to simple components, carbon dioxide, water, and more bacteria cells. And from there, they do a great job of cleaning the water. The bubbles are, are actually oxygen, air bubbles. The bacteria, they need oxygen to live just like you and I need to breathe. And we have a blower system and some diffusers designed to add air to the tank. And as there's more food or more loading coming into the plant, obviously the bacteria get hungry because they want to eat all that food. That'll cause them to use more oxygen. So we have a couple uh, dissolved oxygen sensors located in the tank in specific locations. And as the oxygen starts to get depleted because there's more activity from the biology, we'll ramp those blowers up as things kind of tail off overnight, not as much loading into the treatment plant, the blower system will slow down, put less oxygen into the tanks. But we regulate how much oxygen goes to each zone. There's specific operational parameters that require us to remove certain pollutants. So there's a lot of science that goes into treatment there's, wastewater. Absolutely, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of engineering, there's a lot of math, a lot of mechanical skills, uh, biological chemistry skills, a, a lot of disciplines. And, a, and as a wastewater treatment plant operator, you gotta be like a jack of all trades, have a knowledge of a little bit of everything. And this is our uh, next physical process. It's called uh, MBR, membrane bioreactor. The biology from the aeration tanks will float into our MBR tank and in the, 
inside the tank, we just have sheets and sheets of this hollow fiber material, and we literally strain the clean water from the dirty water and filter out the bacteria, and the clean water goes out the center of the tube. We collect them up into a series of headers, and from there, each rack turns into a cassette, and we collect all that clean water, send it out to our uh, receiving stream. So John, we're out on our MBR tank, and if you can imagine all those thin fibers that were put together into a rack, we put 25 of those racks into what we could call a module, and the modules end up into cassettes. So in each cassette, we have 10 cassettes in a train. If you look, there are 10 drops, 10 water collection points, and 10 aeration, aerator header, headers designed to keep that biology and that material, you know, agitating around these fibers because the material is kind of sticky, and if things stick to the fiber, actually will clog the membrane itself, and we won't suck any more water through the, through the fiber. So one method is just a little bit of agitation from the aeration to get, get those fibers going. Every so often, we can back pulse water to, to blow the pores out. But we also have a couple of cleaning processes that we actually utilize. We use citric acid to, uh, to wash those fibers off in a, in a cleaning solution, and we also use some sodium hypochlorite. Well, John, uh, we are actually in our operations control center, and we're looking at some computer systems. And we have two systems. Both the systems are called SCADA, which stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. And that software program, that computer network, allows us to look at remote uh, field sensors. We're looking at pump run statuses. And it brings data back to the, the operator's you know, control center, and we can monitor and trend our dissolved oxygen levels. We saw the oxygen uh, being fed out to the aeration basins. We monitor how many times a pump will turn on and off. It's a very powerful to tool for operators to operate, diagnose, you know, troubleshoot equipment, and really fine tune the uh, wastewater treatment process. So John, these are our return activated sludge pumps that are connected to the membrane bioreactor. The uh, MBR, the, the benefit is a very small footprint, so there's not a lot of detention time for that water to stay in the tank. And if we didn't have a way to return it to the head of the tank in a very fast and efficient manner, we would basically overflow our tanks. So these RAS pumps are pretty big and they're designed to pump a lot of water back to the front of the tank so that we can recycle that water efficiently and effectively. From the MBR process, we um, really validate how efficient that process is working basically on how clean the water is. And it's, it's filtered so well that it's a, a, you know, a typical suspended solids test really is not going to give us correct data. So we actually use turbidity meters, same thing as we do in our drinking water treat plant, to determine how clear, how, how you know, what material is actually in. In the, in the water itself. So it's all, our system's a pressurized system, and you know, to ensure that we have a good sample going into our you know, turbidity meter, we're using your prominent pump to take a clean water sample from the filtrate header, permeate header, and push it through the uh, turbidity meter. Well, John, um, we are actually in the uh, MBR chemical feed room and we actually have three prominent systems here. We have one system that feeds the citric acid chemical that is used to uh, clean our membranes. We have one system that uses the hypochlorite to, for another cleaning chemical and our third set of pumps are designed to feed carbon. If we ever had to do a, an advanced treatment technology more nutrient removal, we would utilize carbon to provide a food source for the bacteria in our aeration basins. But, one of the reasons we chose Prominent is um, we actually had an opportunity uh, twice, uh, you know, our professional associations has toured the factory and just saw the quality and control that was put into just building and assembling these systems. I mean, they're a local company, they're just 20 minutes you know, south from this wastewater treatment plant. So a good um, opportunity if we had a, an issue, you know, quick response time for customer service, spare parts, great inventory supply on that respect. Um, but um, just a night neat product packaged, you know, in a very efficient and, you know, good footprint. 
Well, we're at the uh, top deck and we're overlooking our chlorine contact tank. So all the water that comes out of the MBR process went to the chlorine contact tank. And although the water is clean enough and there's not a lot of bacteria in the water, we still have a permitted regulation that we have to chlorinate our water just as a double check to make sure there's no bacteria or harmful you know, organisms in the water that can cause human health problems. So from here, water exits the chlorine contact tank and it is, um, enters the re-aeration tank. We feed a little bit of sodium bisulfite as a dechlorine agent because obviously chlorine is toxic. It would kill a fish just as much as it would kill you or me if we had a large enough dose. So remove the chlorine from the water and then it exits the treatment plant and enters the brush creek. We're at the end of our journey. The water that came into the plant about eight hours ago finally made it through all its treatment processes and we have uh, the ability to, to return it to the receiving stream, Brush Creek. Um, the treatment plant really is designed to protect human health in the environment. That's the mission of our operators and our maintenance staff, our chemists, our engineers, our electricians. And um, you know, water is a, um, a finite resource. So there's only so much drinkable, usable water on the planet and our role as a steward for the environment is to recycle that water, return it back to the next downstream user. In this case, is probably one of the farmers that's gonna pull some water out of Brush Creek to irrigate his crops with or you know, water his cows. Um, we take very good pride in trying to be good stewards to the environment and um, hopefully we can keep that uh, interest for other generations to come. Well thanks John, we uh, appreciate to give you the opportunity to take a little tour around Cranberry Township today, learn a little bit about wastewater treatment and um, obviously look at the products that we uh, you know, have in our treatment plant that um, we really look forward to a long relationship, um, you know, good customer service, you know, things that are important to us, the same attributes are important to your company. So we look forward that, to a, a long wastewater career together. Appreciate Another that. 30 years. <laughs> we thank you for watching our video and hopefully you learned something. Have a great day.